Greetings! For this round of the Animal Artists Collective, our theme is urban wildlife. I decided to do it on a slightly different kind of animal. I chose the bee. I really love bees and was delighted that they would fit in with this theme. Bees in the urban landscape are actually more present than I first thought. There's been a movement to create space for hives on rooftops and have the bees make the best of the city plant landscape. Many cities have local honey made by these bees. I know it's being done here in Montreal, but also in Toronto and Quebec. Often, these rooftop hives are next to small gardens, so they also bring in truly local produce for one to enjoy. At this point, I think everyone must have heard that the honeybees have gone through a rough patch in the last years. Pesticides, parasites, colony collapse disorder, it's been difficult to maintain the bee population to the levels our food consumption requires. For some beekeepers, city bees could be the way to help boost up the bee population. Pesticides are not allowed over cities, for obvious reasons, and the rooftops provide a lot of space to set up the hives and gardens. Personally, I'm super thrilled to have this option of the most local honey one can get and that it's a good thing for the little bees. When I set out to work on this painting, I was met with a first obstacle I hadn't thought about. I wanted this piece to reflect the urban theme and to have it feel like it's set in a city, but then I realized that if I wanted to show the bee at a good size, there would be little to no background visible. I could draw the rooftop hives, which I felt are a good element of the bee's setting, but felt a bit sad that I wouldn't get to paint a bee. So I went back and forth in my sketchbook and started looking for references of both settings. When looking for Montreal and Quebec reference pictures, I found the setting I ended up using for the painting. I saw this picture of a hanging flower pot in the streets of Old Quebec. I realized that this was a great setup for a bee, even if most of the scene would be either blurry or out of frame. The out-of-focus background would also be nice to make the foreground stand out. I obviously went for an hexagon for the painting's shape, the shape of the honeycomb. Looking at my reference, I started planning the painting, picking up the colors I will use from my Daniel Smith paints. In the end, I used only four colors for the painting. Sap Green, the new formula, Quinacridone Gold, also new formula, Carmine, and Graphite Grey. I chose the grey to match the blurry buildings in the background, the Carmine to paint the blurry flowers in the background, the Sap Green for the plant's leaves, and the Quinacridone Gold for the bee and the flowers. I knew that if I mixed these, I'd be able to get a nice dark color to paint the dark stripes and features on the bee. They would also be nice colors to mix together for some subtle color variants. I usually try to work with four to six colors in a painting, and I choose them depending on the reference. This is why I end up with a substantial palette, as I don't often start a planned painting with our common triad colors. It's just the way I like to work, and the result is a lot of different tubes of paints. I will show all the supplies I used in the video, but here's the list. The drawing was traced with a green-gold polychromos color pencil, on Arches Cold Press 140 pound paper, from a pad, using my D.B. Meyer light tablet. I used Escoda Ultimo brushes to paint, a flat one from a special Miss Lead set, and a round size den. I also used a mop style brush from Windsor & Newton, 
that I exclusively use to wet paper. The paints I used are from Daniel Smith. I also used the painter's tape to mask off the edges of the hexagon shape on my paper. So that's about it for this painting. I'm very excited to see how bees will further become a part of the urban landscape in the years to come, and I'm looking forward to tasting the honey they produce. I hope that this way we can help counter the problems that have been affecting them in the last years, and continue building this modern take on our cooperation with bees. If you want to read more on the Animal Artists Collective, please check the description below. There will also be links to the other artists contributing in the collective, make sure you go check out their lovely art as well. As with other AAC paintings, this one will be up for sale at the moment this video goes live, with the money going to a bee-related charity. Again, check the description box for all the information. Thank you very much for watching, have a great day, bye bye!